Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making a short video to show you the proper diaphragm and gasket configuration in these small carburetors for two cycle engines. The most common carburetors you're going to find on equipment are Walbro and Zama carburetors. Today I have a Walbro. So I'm just going to take off the covers here and show you exactly which configuration the diaphragm and the gasket should be in. So I'm going to start by taking off this cover over here. This is the side with the pump diaphragms. I'm just going to leave the cover here for now. Now I'm going to proceed to remove this cover over here. And here you can see the metering diaphragm and I'm going to pull it off. Usually people ask me what's the configuration when they're about to put the diaphragms back in their carburetor. So now I'm going to take the metering diaphragm and as you can see the gasket is stuck to it. Now this carburetor is not going to be used in anything anytime soon so it doesn't matter what I do with the diaphragm here. Usually once you peel it off the gasket it's not recommended to reuse it. And as you can see when it's been sitting for a while it's stuck on there pretty good. So now when you go to put back the metering diaphragm you always put the gasket on the carburetor first. Now if you look at a parts list this is the order that it's going to go in and also if you look at a work manual it's going to show the same thing. Now you put your metering diaphragm back on and the metal plate back on. Now for the small hole in the plate here it doesn't really matter it's just basically a vent hole and now you just put the screws back on and that's it. Now if I turn my attention to the other side of the carburetor you can see it's nice and flush here and on this side it's the opposite. The diaphragm goes on the carburetor first and the gasket on the cover. And here's the cover and the diaphragm and the gasket. So when you go to put your diaphragms back on, put the gasket first, which it will be right on the cover. And then you want to put this diaphragm on like that. The reason that goes in this configuration on this side is so that the little valves here can contact the carburetor holes directly. If the gasket was on first, these little valves here would not shut the holes properly and your carburetor would run very poorly, if at all. So then you just put it back on. Sometimes you have to move the lever here just to line up the plate. And that's it. Just put the screw back on and you're all done. So remember, on the diaphragm side, the gasket goes on the carburetor first, then the metering diaphragm on top, then the plate. On this side here, the diaphragm touches the carburetor first, and then the gasket goes on top, and then the metal plate, and the screw. And that's it. On almost all the diaphragm carburetors I work on, this is the configuration that the diaphragms go on. Except when you work on small Toro snow throwers with a two-cycle Tecumseh engine, some of them will have the metering diaphragm on the carburetor first, then the gasket, and some other carburetors on those same engines will have the gasket on the carburetor first, then the metering diaphragm. Make sure to look at your repair manual before you do this on a small Toro snow thrower engine. But for most chainsaws, trimmers, and other things like that, it'll be the same as today. So hopefully this answered your question. Make sure to bookmark the video for future reference. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day.